Good morning. Good morning. Um, some people have commented that this is a very, very sudden move. And um, I know that it seems that way, sometimes to us as well. Uh, but Joanne and I have been praying about uh, where God has in mind for us uh, for about three and a half years. And um, our grandson just happens to be three and a half years old. And he lives in Boston with his mom and his dad, our son and daughter-in-law. Uh, and as we've been praying about where we might continue to serve God, the idea of family became more and more important to Joanne and I. And um, I chatted with Michael about a year ago that we were thinking about it. And um, he continued to pray about us as well. And we decided in March uh, that, yes, God was in fact calling us to New England. Um, and uh, so we talked to a realtor. And uh, we ended up deciding we will list the house on April 7th, which happened to be a Thursday. Um, well, that plan went awry because <laughs> our realtor a week before was talking with her neighbors and said that, you know, the Nelson's house is going to come on the market. They said, oh, we've wanted to live over in that part of Mariposa for quite some time. Can we see the house? So she called, the realtor calls. They come over Monday afternoon. We had an agreement on the sale of our house Monday night. It never was listed. <laughs> so all of a sudden, the vacation that we had planned in New England to see our son and grandson became a house hunting trip. And off we fly to New Hampshire. <laughs> God's is still at work there, uh, I can report, because we now have a house in Nashua, New Hampshire. And uh, a week from t today, uh, because of the schedule of moves and uh, vacancies and all of that, we will be on I-40 heading west as you celebrate Pentecost. So the timeline got scrunched. <laughs> Um, if you are going to say yes when Jesus says follow me, you should probably have your running shoes handy because often God does it just that same way. Uh, and so today we celebrate with you uh, that God is leading us and calling us. As I told uh, the children, the promise is the same uh, no matter uh, where we are and who we are, it is I will be with you. And in fact, uh, we actually are church together with New England already. While Joanne and I were in New England with the house hunting, we worshiped at uh, the Lutheran Church, the ELCA Church in Nashua. It's Christ the King Lutheran Church. And the complete story is in your bulletin this morning, but in the goodie bag that they give uh, visitors was a candle. And the story behind the candle real brief version, is that a New England pastor was visiting in Russia uh, several years ago, and uh, while he was there, an older woman came up and pressed a few coins in his hand and said, please do something for world peace. Okay, what are you gonna do with just, you know, maybe the equivalent of 15, 20 cents? But when he got home, he bought a candle, and he put it on the altar and lit it so that he, both him, himself, and his parishioners would remember and pray about world peace. Well, the members of his congregation started spreading the word, if you will, by spreading the candle. And so as people would visit the church, they would get a candle, and they would get the story behind the candle, and they would be asked to take it back to their congregation and light the candle and pray regularly for world peace. And so... Joanne and I uh, are bringing that candle here this morning. And uh, as both Michael and Bishop Gonya are very fond of saying, we are church together. And when we are together, we are even better church. So please join me in thinking about and praying for world peace. Yes, so we are now worshiping together with churches across New England, across uh, Northern Europe. And
Okay. There we go. Um, Joanne and I made our last big move 13 years ago, 2003. We moved here from Phoenix and um, we were worshiping in a Lutheran church in Phoenix. We looked on the internet, Lutheran churches on the west side. Well, there's Cross of Hope. There's All Saints Lutheran Church. There's Community of Joy, the subtlety of God. We were currently in Phoenix worshiping at Community Church of Joy. So God puts us at Community of Joy Church in New Mexico. Um, you're gonna. <laughs> Nope. Okay. In dealing with change, so 13 years ago we changed, we're changing, you're changing this spring. Um, God is, demonstrates that he's in charge in many ways. One was the, the whole sale of the house and houses kind of thing scrunching into the equivalent of about a month. Um, another change is the promise, but the change that kind of struck me as I was paying you know, some attention to the readings these last few weeks, that God is preparing all of us for change all of the time. This is two weeks ago, the reading Sunday. This is Jesus, again, with his disciples, and they are going to experience the biggest change possible in their lives and our lives. Um, as, and Jesus is trying to prepare them. So he tells them what church is supposed to be. And this was a reading two Sundays ago. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. And here's the point. By this everybody will know you are my disciples, that you love one another. He strips it down to the basics and says, this is the important stuff. This is the kernel. This is what church is. Last Sunday, we're still reading in John. J Jesus is still talking to his disciples. The message shifts a little bit. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. So we really don't need to study, we don't need a huge book, we don't need to memorize a whole lot of stuff because the Holy Spirit will teach you and remind you of everything I said. And then the promise again, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Today's version that might read, relax, I got it. And he's promising that to Joanne and I and to you. And then this morning, this is, um, as Jean said, right before Jesus is gonna get captured, trial, crucifixion, and he's praying. And notice who he's praying on behalf of. I ask not only on behalf of the disciples, but also on behalf of all of those who believe in me through their word. That chain started in the garden, and the chain is alive in Rio Rancho this morning. He's praying for us. So he's got it. The directions are very clear and very simple and excruciatingly difficult, love one another. And then he prays to his Father on behalf of us. So that's the message, I guess, that I get out of change. God is with us. And as I, some of you know, I'm fond of saying, Jesus' invitation is follow me. He's already there. So he's already in New England. And he demonstrated that with the candle Michael has told me many other things about New England and about churches in New England. 
So there's that interchange as, as we now swap experiences, I guess you could say. And so we come down to community of joy. Who are we? And who is God calling us to be? And what is he calling us to do? Quick history. In 2000, the church actually was chartered in 1989. But in 2004, we started construction of our own facility. In 2005, we dedicated our church, May 5 actually, so uh, 11 years ago this week, just a couple of days ago. In 2006, Pastor Scott Hackler moved north. Interestingly, he moved to a church in suburban Chicago called Joy Lutheran Church. In 2006, Pastor Tom Anderson became our interim pastor, and in 2009, we did, it, we did two, huge, two huge changes. We dedicated our education and fellowship space. We basically doubled the size of this facility. And we, we installed Michael Bastian as our pastor. And now we're in 216. And the same promise that God made to Jeremiah, he makes to us. I have a plan for you. Okay. Didn't know exactly what it's going to look like, but there are some significant changes to uh, our fellowship together, our leadership, and to our music. So uh, God is still at work here, and he still has a plan. We are confident that the plan that he has in mind for us has to do with the things that Jesus talked about in the garden. The plan involves sharing his love. The plan involves growing his family. And we have operated with that as our concise purpose statement for the last 12 years. As we moved into this facility in the first place, we realized that God was basically giving us a tool. He wasn't giving us a place to hide. He was giving us a tool to use to accomplish his purpose and build his kingdom and grow his family. And at the risk of leaving something off of the list, just think about, in your experience, all of the ways in which community of joy shares God's love, Christ's love, and grows God's family. We share with our welcome. We share with home communion. I've, interestingly, the last couple of years, I have been working with the Synod in the Rocky Mountains, so I have visited a number of churches throughout the Rocky Mountains and worked with them in terms of review of their mission and their ministry. Community of Joy is the only one I've come across of the, of the Lutheran churches in the Rocky Mountains that has a home communion ministry of members, of lay people. And the blessings that the home communion members, the team members, receive when they give communion, every one of them will tell you the blessings that we receive when we do it far outweigh the blessings that the person who's receiving the communion gets. So we are sharing Christ's love in that way. And we're fairly unique in doing so. We also have a prayer team every Tuesday morning. A group of people meet here and regularly pray through the list on the back of your bulletin, as well as other things that have come up during the week. And so we are sharing Christ's love and growing God's family through prayer. I didn't run into too many regularly scheduled prayer meetings in other churches that I've seen and worked with. We have small groups. So that, this one's a little more common. A lot of churches have small groups, but if you think about all of the different groups of community of joy, we have two men's groups. One meets on Saturdays, one meets on Mondays. We have Joyful Hearts. We just heard their meeting. Uh, and continuing to do work, we have Rejoice is actually a small group. They pray for each other and about each other as well as the music and the worship 
Um, we have the quilters. We have the women of prayer. I know I'm going to forget somebody. We have the supper groups. All of these are opportunities to get together other than Sunday mornings and to learn from each other and to grow. And so we are sharing Christ's love and growing God's family in that respect as well. Interesting point, all of those groups, there's only one of them led by the pastor. All of those groups are led by those who will believe it because of the disciples' words, by you and me. So we are genuinely a community. We demonstrated that again twice this week, that we are a community that cares and expresses God's love and support for families when they lose a loved one. We're, all, we're almost getting too good at that kind of thing, okay? We, we're getting too much practice. But at the same time, this place is a scene of joy Saturday afternoon, this afternoon, as we celebrate the talent and the enthusiasm and the love of music in this case, we are also a church that on Sunday morning celebrates with joy. Some of those churches that I have visited kind of got to wonder if they can tap into that joy. It's a little too staid, it's a little too serious. And that's not the case here. Yeah. So we demonstrate our community, we demonstrate our joy as we share Christ's love and grow God's family. Here's the most, this, this shot probably needs an update. <laughs> this is the dedication in 2009 of our education wing and you get a snapshot of the community of joy. You know, we are an aptly named church. Jesus calls us to, to be community. And that's community of joy. So as we leave and pursue whatever adventures God has for us in New England, uh, as Aaron leaves and pursues the adventure of working with a different church here in Albuquerque, and as Community of Joy moves into its future, pursuing the adventure, the continuing adventure, if you will, of sharing Christ's love and growing God's family, there is a prayer that Michael often uses at the end of communion. And it seems to me that that prayer is appropriate for us today, just as it is probably every day, but maybe especially today, it is appropriate for Aaron. It's certainly appropriate for Joanne and I. And I believe it is appropriate for community of joy. So would you join me in the prayer? God, you have called us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untried, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And all of God's people joyfully said, Amen. Story. Hey. It's a story about my Jesus. Hey.